At their villa in Crete, Brian and Andrew received some good news about the apartment downstairs. A quote for the building work that they could actually afford. That's the total price for everything. Yeah. Maxi, for everything. That's amazing. But there was bad news when Brian's idea to serve English Sunday lunches at work didn't quite go according to plan. Absolutely no one came. Welcome to your room. But despite this flop and being strapped for cash, Brian booked them a surprise holiday in a luxury five-star hotel. That's indeed. <laughs> yes. And unbeknown to them, back at the villa, the builders moved in and started work downstairs. The question is, will Brian and Andrew have any money left to pay for it after their holiday? How much is it? I don't know. Feeling the pressures of the last few weeks, Brian booked he and Andrew into Crete's five-star Porto Alunda Hotel. With many impressive facilities available to guests, they don't waste any time in making use of them. Well, Brian's booked me a water ski lesson, which is very nice of him, but I've never done it before. So, um, it'll be a new experience. I'm not quite sure about it. A little bit nervous, but uh, I'm sure with expert instruction I'll be all right. Predictably, Brian has opted for the easy option, a luxury body pampering session that claims to take years off your life and leave you feeling rejuvenated and relaxed as never before. Your name is Agulus. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yes, I'm very nervous. Don't worry about it. No? Just relax. I put on so much weight. Meanwhile, down by the water, Andrew's instructor, Dagis, takes him through the basics of water skiing. Like that. But back in the spa, the search for eternal youthful vigour and beauty is already taking an unexpected turn for Brian. What is that? This is the envelopment, see what the envelopment. It's very nice for the skin. But Brian isn't completely convinced. Well, I've stepped in something like this before, but then I didn't put on them I must say, I did wonder when I saw the surgical gloves. Quite sure where he was going to stick it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's now. It's okay. I'm all right. Outside, Andrew is ready to begin his sea trials using the practice pole. And already he seems pretty relaxed doing what for him is a completely new and strange activity. The same can't really be said of Brian, who's struggling to adapt to being plastered in a thick coat of slimy seaweed paste. Perhaps it was a mistake to tick all the activity boxes when he booked. Yeah. It feel just a little bit warm. That's very relaxing, believe me, so don't worry. The hot electric blanket is set to run for 20 minutes at a temperature of 35 degrees. So I'm on slow cook. Right, ready? Time now for Andrew to try his water skiing without the safety pole. Come on, Andrew, you're not supposed to be on your bum. Go on, go. Oh. It's just getting very warm now. Yeah, I know that. I feel like a cooked chicken. And I'm absolutely sweating buckets. But, uh, Hang in there, Brian. It'll soon be over. Andrew, though, looks like he could stay out there all day. I love that chunk of time. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so now you can have a shower? Yeah. Good fun. Good fun. Well done, Ariel. Thank you. How does that feel, Brian? Wet. Yeah. It's not... It's strange. It is. <laughs> so do you think we'll do it again? Yes, probably. I think I'd rather go water skiing. But, try everything once, they say. And I've tried it, but it is only once. 
After all that excitement, Brian and Andrew take a relaxing walk by the water to compare notes. So, how would you get on? All right. Well, you should have been there to watch, and you'd have seen. I was otherwise occupied. I don't know which bits of me doesn't ate the most, actually, my arms and my legs. But mine was not quite what I thought it would be. I was dressed up like a chicken in cling film, then wrapped in a... Like a it's hardly hard. ...an under blanket switched on to cook slowly for about 40 minutes. I had to stop it. I think I need a couple of hours in a darkened room. <laughs> you know? And you're sure this is all inclusive? Yes, I'm not to get a big bill at the end of it. No. So, despite having enjoyed his water skiing, Andrew is still concerned about the money they're spending. But next up is lunch. No sign of Brian, though, who has been sidetracked by something very close to his heart. A very large picture window. It was a retractable electric window, a bit like this, that he had wanted to install upstairs at their villa. But he'd reluctantly been forced by Andrew to abandon it on cost grounds. It seems the idea hasn't really gone away, though. Hiya. Uh, oh, there you are. Where have you been? Oh, just out and about taking a few pictures. Of what? Nothing, not a lot. Have you ordered? No, I haven't yet. I was waiting for you. 120 miles away, back at the villa, the builders are really cracking on and making good progress on the downstairs apartment, albeit without the presence or even knowledge of Brian and Andrew. Back at the hotel, after a busy first day, the relaxing and luxurious surroundings seem to be having the desired effect, even on Andrew. Have you enjoyed it? Hmm, I have. Nice break. Well, you're not worrying about the money anymore. No, no, I've got that to the back of the old... Back of the, back of the brain, back of the brain for the next couple of days. Well, I'm not quite sure, but sooner or later the builders will be in. Well, hopefully sooner. They'll start. On Liz and Pete's downstairs, yep. and we'll be back on track. And then we'll be in business. Mm. In fact, drink to it. Yeah. Downstairs and to us. And to us. Well, they do say ignorance is bliss, but just when all seems to be going so well. You've seen these windows? Yes, I've seen the windows. I know exactly what you're going to say. I'm not going to say anything. Yes, you are. Well, I might. Let's not spoil either. Uh, no, we won't. Don't you think they look good? They do look good, yes. Good, well, at least you think they look good. It's day two of Brian and Andrew's holiday, and back at Palmer's, Brian's boss, Nick, is still trying to find out what has happened to his manager. I haven't seen him today. Where is he? Have you seen him, uh, Brian or all? Uh, because I haven't seen him for a few days, eh? No sign of him. He disappeared. So anyway, set your phone, uh, make sure you tell I'm looking for him. I'm very pissed off. And Nick is not the only one who's unhappy. Back in Wales, Les and Pete, Brian and Andrew's friends and business partners in the downstairs apartment, haven't heard a word from them either. Well, the last time we spoke to Brian, it was before Christmas, and uh, he got a, a couple of quotes, and... So he wanted this extra money from us. And we just said at the time that under no circumstances were we prepared to lay out any more money. Um, and since then, we've not heard a single word. I think he's, he's probably realised that he's upset us by trying to tap us for more money. But he also so, he likes to keep a low profile if he doesn't know what, what to do. Mm. Oh, yeah, Brian's not somebody, somebody that'll come forward. If he's, if he's in a real dilemma, then he'll consider silence will be the best option. And we're getting, to say the least, very, very pissed off with the whole situation. But I'm not going to put up with it for too much longer. So I think we're going to make a phone call and find out exactly what's going on. Surprising, really, why Pete, knowing Brian and Andrew as he does, thinks they should have any idea about what is going on at the villa. In fact, the answer is plenty. The builders are making good progress and seem to be in a battle with the dogs to see who can make the most noise. Meanwhile, neighbour Jerry, who'd agreed to look after the dogs, is in for a little more than he'd bargained for.
Well, that was absolute chaos. And not only that, the builders were all over the place, and Brian and Andrew never told me anything about this. Back in Ilunda, things couldn't be calmer or more relaxed for Brian and Andrew. Up to now, at least. Mm -hmm. Hello, Brian. Uh, Brian, where the bloody hell are you? Oh, hello, Pete. Um... That's right. What are you doing? Well, we've just gone away for a few days to Ilunda to try and um, rekindle our spirits because of the stress we've been under. Um, what are you doing there? We're just taking a short weekend break. I thought you were skin. Well, we are, but we found this um, little place that, well, it's turned out to be not entirely what I'd expected it to be, but it's... Well, well, I don't believe that, Brian. In the last time I spoke with you, you were trying to get 20 grand out of us. And here you are, you've gone off for holiday. Why did you need holiday? You live in holiday, fella. No, well, I know we do, but we needed to go completely away because everything was getting on top. There was sort of standoffs between Andrew and myself. It was getting really fraught, Pete. And we just thought, well, we just need to get away. We might well, not... I can't really understand how going away on holiday is going to help me financial situation. Well, it may do, it may not. But one bit of good news, if you let me get a word in edgeways, is that we had a phone call just before we were due to leave saying that... Um, a quote was on its way to us, which was 30,000 euros less than the first one. Well, and so... Right, well... That's incredible, really. What mm. are you going to do when you come back and say they've made a cock-up? Well, I am going to pray that they haven't made a cock-up. Well, well... You go, well, I'll have another holiday. Chill out, I suppose. No, we won't. Well, how do you hope you're still alive? Well, I hope you're still alive. Well, you know, it's not another red herring. Well, you know, it's not another red herring. Well, I hope it's not either. I think we better cut this short. I'll talk to you in two or three days. Look, I have a feeling that the thing will start in two or three weeks' time, and we well, then... That well, all right. Is Les yeah, all right? How's Les? Uh, she's OK. Good show. All yeah, right. She's sitting by me, not looking very happy. No? No, I'll talk to you in a couple of days. All right, I'll ring you I'll when we get you back. back. of course, off your holiday. Yes. OK. Yeah, bye. Oh, all right, bye. Not a happy chap, then? No. So there was a few little porky pies in there, wasn't there? Well, I can hardly tell him that we had this view here with swimming pool two and a foot massage. Yes, I'm sure. Anyway, how's your feet? Uh, actually, this is very good because it's making them feel really good. You've just got the other one to do and then mm. that's, uh, that's me done. So, uh, how's the cocktail? It's lovely. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Brian and Andrew have spent the last few days living in the lap of luxury at a five-star hotel on Crete's east coast. But today, there's been a change of plan. Well, we've decided we're going to go home. Nice though it is here, and we've had a good couple of days, it's a bit pricey. The weather's turned, so we've decided to go back home. Brian's paying bill, which should be <laughs> amusing. Uh, room 61, to yes, bill, please. Yes. Thank you. We are, I'm afraid, sadly. Wonderful time. It's a wonderful hotel. The only hotel I've ever stayed in where there was not one problem. Thank you. Well, Brian may not have experienced any problems with the hotel so far, but as he gets a good look at the itemised bill, he suddenly looks decidedly less chirpy. Uh, yeah, now I'll pay with my card. It seems the all-inclusive extra activities may not, after all, have been as all-inclusive as Brian had assumed. So, time to reveal the problem. How was that? Um, it was... I had a very good deal on the room. Um, but the extras were only all-inclusive at the bottom of the bill. So all those boxes we ticked, I'd have to pay. Um... So I had to pay with the card. Oh dear. <laughs> we had a wonderful weekend, it was a wonderful hotel. I think I'd better give somebody a ring, see if they've got any more hours for me to work. It'll be between me and my maker until the bank statement comes out. <laughs> Hiya. No. All done. Settled up? Yeah. Do we have some money left? Heaps of money left. Good. I'm going to stay in clean windows or...? No. It's all paid. Right. And everybody's happy. Look at the fact that. Next stop. Home. Home.
It's been three days since Brian went AWOL from his job in the cafe bar where he works, and now it dawns on him that it might be a good idea to check in with his boss, Nick. Not least to make sure he hasn't been forgotten. Hiya, it's Brian. You know, Brian, your guy? How are you? And Nick, we just had to get away for a few days. We just needed to get away. Anyway, from tomorrow, I'm back with a vengeance. And I'll work double time. Whatever you need. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Nick, all right? He's fine. Oh. I just got a phone call from Brian. Uh, he's uh, coming back. And uh, he wants to uh, work uh, double shift. <laughs> I'm very surprised about that. By the way, he's going to be in a big trouble when he's coming back. The nice thing is, he understood. I, I did not really tell him what was happening. But he understood. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now that's one interpretation, I suppose, Brian. Four hours later, and Brian and Andrew arrive back at the villa to find there's been a few changes since they left. Why is all that stuff in our garage? That is everything out of the, the great store. Well, why is it there? The great store being the downstairs apartment, where all this lot used to be kept. Looks like somebody's cleared the thing. There's the whole of the great store in here. I wonder who's done this, then. Who, indeed? Who has done this, Andrew? Well, it can only be the builder. They must have done it to empty it ready for next week. That's all I can think of. What is going on? See what it looks like empty. Do you know it looks like there's a wall there? I can't see straight through. There is a wall there. What the bloody hell is going on? Look at it. Well, they must have started early then. We can at least tell Liz and Pete it started. Yes. Don't worry about are they going to turn up. They have. <laughs> they turned up, we weren't here. They won't believe us. They will not believe us. They won't. <laughs> The following morning, and what better way to celebrate their return home than a nice long lie-in. Or perhaps not. In order to get the job finished quickly, the builders are working flat out, and here in Crete, work starts early. Fragile is the word I would use, fragile this morning. Thought they'd have a nice lie-in this morning. Um, nobody would start work as early as they did, but they didn't. And despite having just returned from a relaxing three-day holiday, Brian sounds like someone who's got out the wrong side of the bed. I'm very pissed off, actually. We've had the builders in. I thought we'd have a day of sort of semi-rest, respite. It unsettled the animals, the cats are flying around. I think it's one of those things we have to grin and bear it because we need to get downstairs finished for Leds and Pete and we need to get it finished so we can start getting people in because that's going to bring in an income. So, so it's sort of no pain, no gain, I guess. To take his mind off the racket, Andrew decides to have a sort through their belongings in the garage. And even Brian has roused himself to take a look at the changes going on downstairs. And he's so impressed, he completely forgets his grumpiness about the noise. Amazing. Quite amazing. And they certainly cracked yeah. on. I think Pete and Les will be absolutely delighted. Because their part of the dream is now happening. It's not just ours, it's theirs. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So brilliant, in fact, it's given Brian an idea. Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Petros. Petros. Oh, hi. If Petros's team can work such wonders and so quickly downstairs, Brian reckons he just may be the man to breathe new life into his previously abandoned pet project, the giant window. So, my idea, which yes. I've had for a long time, yes. is a big window, clear, that goes up and down, not this, not this, not this, but one clear... Ah, oh, one clear... Yeah. Hmm, all clear then? Now tell him the next bit, Brian. And 
here, full glass, up and down. Uh, down? Into the garage. Ah, the garage? Yeah. It goes through here. It, it was down there. The garage, down? Yeah, garage downstairs. Hmm, yes. Well, maybe not so clear. Unaware of the scheming going on upstairs, Andrew is starting to unearth some long-forgotten relics of their former life. I don't think we're quite ready for them yet. Incredibly, Petros seems to have managed to decode Brian's madcap mumblings and actually understand what it is he's after. Possible? Yes. Possible. Yeah? Yes, possible. Now this is music to Brian's ears. It's just a good job Andrew can't hear through his. I need a price. Right. Uh, let's go go tomorrow. Tomorrow. Maybe. But our secret. And plan. Yeah, okay. plan, yeah. But our secret. Okay. Next. Not Andrew. Okay. Don't tell Andrew. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in the next program, Brian hits on an idea to bring in more customers to Nick's bar and get back in his boss's good books. But finding the acts proves harder than expected. What have we got? Talent wise coming in. <laughs> a big fat zero. Right. Hello. So in desperation, he turns to professional drag artist Fiona Motion for help. Blonde wig, yes, I like. I can twirl. Yeah. No, it's like riding a bicycle. Do not tell Andrew about those shoes.